This is Humble Woman Ministries, and today I wanted to talk about the rapture. The rapture has been quite the subject of interest for many Bible believers as we are becoming more and more aware that the return of Christ is getting closer and closer. I fully believe in a rapture. I don't know specifically when it is. There are many different philosophies and theories regarding post-tribulation, mid-tribulation, or pre-tribulation. I honestly don't know. I do know that the Bible says we're not subject to wrath, but wrath isn't necessarily tribulation, so I'm kind of left in a, in a spot where I just literally trust God to come when the timing is right for him and have faith that he will come at the exact right moment. But I wanted to take a look at what scripture says about being rapture ready, because there are many false teachers out there right now trying to tell you that you have to do certain things in order to be raptured. They're telling you that you have to kneel in order to be raptured. They're telling you that you have to call out a certain name of God in order to be raptured. Some people like to, and by people I mean false teachers, like to make you feel as though you're not worthy and that you might not make the rapture if you don't do certain things. And I wanted to tell you right now that all of that is false. Scripture does give us an indication of what we must do to be raptured. So we're going to take a look at that today. We're going to see what the Bible says. We're going to see what the Word of God says. And we're not going to depend on vain knowledge that comes from man, but rather the knowledge and wisdom that comes from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We're going to start in 1 Thessalonians 3. It's a prelude to 1 Thessalonians 4, which is probably the most prolific scripture on the rapture. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go down here to 1 Thessalonians 3.13. And this is Timothy's encouraging report. Uh, this is Paul speaking. Uh, he says, Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. And may he strengthen your hearts. Why would you need your heart to be strengthened? So that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God. It also has to do with increasing your love and overflowing this love towards each other and everyone else. And then he goes on to say, when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. So here is a picture of Jesus Christ returning with his holy ones at the end of the age. So let's move on to 1 Thessalonians 4. So here in 1 Thessalonians 4, it's talking about living to please God. As you recall in the verse before, it says, May he strengthen your heart so that you may live blameless and holy. Uh, in order to live blameless and holy, the Holy Spirit does have to strengthen your heart in order to enable you to live that way. So here we are, 1 Thessalonians 4. It says, As for the other matters, brothers and sisters, we instructed you how to live in order to please God, as in fact you are living. Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of Lord Jesus. So here we see instructions being given to the Thessalonians from Paul by the authority of the Lord Jesus. Now, anybody else that's giving you any kind of instructions that do not align biblically, or if the person giving you the instructions is not the Apostle Paul, I would encourage you to discard anything that they say because they're fools. Anyway, it says, It is God's will that you should be sanctified. And how are you sanctified? You are sanctified when you avoid sexual immorality that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable. And notice, this is the first thing that Paul talks about, sexual immorality. Avoid it and control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans. You know, what's funny is people who are sleeping around and having sex outside of marriage 
will be the first people to accuse you of being a pagan for having a Christmas tree, while the Bible clearly says that if you are partaking in sexual immorality and you have passionate lust, then you are like the pagans. So I think that's great because the Bible clearly shows us that it's not what we do, it's what we are. Doing something doesn't make us pagan, but being something uh, like a lustful, sexual, immoral person makes you like the pagans. Anyway, not in a passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God, and that in this manner no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister in a sexually immoral way. There are people out there who claim to be Christian, but what they want to do is take advantage of you. So be very careful, brothers and sisters, especially if you are a single woman. You must use incredible discernment and be incredibly careful about the kinds of relationships that you have, especially with men. Be very, very careful and always conduct yourself in a way that is acceptable to God all the time. It goes on to say, the Lord will punish all who commit such sins. And, and the interesting thing about this is they're talking about supposed believers and warning them against sexual immorality and still saying that the Lord will punish you as a believer if you commit this type of sin. As we told you and warned you before, for God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Living a holy life is how we conduct ourselves, not by the name we use to talk to Jesus or following certain laws. That's not what makes us holy and sanctified in the eyes of the Lord, but it's how we conduct ourselves. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God. And the very God who gives you his Holy Spirit. So this is a big deal. And, you know, it's interesting uh, that they mention this right before they talk about the rapture. So my first bit of advice uh, that I am gleaning from the Bible is that if you are conducting yourselves in a way that is sexually immoral, then you need to knock it off. Because scripture very clearly here, right before it talks about the rapture, is talking about not conducting yourself in a way that would make you impure, but living a holy life. So I would say number one, rapture ready, holy life. Okay? Now about your love for one another. We do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all of God's family throughout Macedonia. Yet we urge you, brothers and sisters, to do so more and more, and to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. Perfect. Right before rapture scripture, it says, lead a holy life, don't be sexually immoral, love one another, love one another more and more, lead a quiet life, mind your business, work with your hands, win the respect of outsiders, and don't be dependent on anybody. That's great. Why don't you follow these instructions? Instead of kneeling and saying a specific name before the Lord comes, I think this is fantastic. Let's move on. So here we are in the big E on the I chart of rapture. This is where Paul talks about the catching away. So let's read on. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death. So these are people who have previously died. So that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. So uh, we know what happens after death so we don't have to grieve in the way that the unsaved grieve because they have no understanding of the hope and eternity that lies in heaven for us when we pass away. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. 
so the dead in Christ shall rise first. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Encourage one another with these words. It doesn't say go around and put restrictions on your brothers and sisters so they might question if they will be raptured. It says encourage one another with these words. It doesn't say go around and make up extra biblical nonsense that will instruct people to perform a series of commands or else they won't be raptured. No, it says encourage one another with these words. We will be raptured. Amen. And here we are in 1 Thessalonians 5, continuing on. And this is fantastic too for all those date setters. The day of the Lord. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates. We do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. So all you people wasting time predicting the date of the rapture, listen up. Because Paul says the day of the Lord will come like a thief. And as believers, we should all know this very well. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. Because you are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep. But let us be awake and sober. Awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and hope of salvation as a helmet. Wow, look at this. This is the armor of God. We belong to the day, let's be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. And finally, in 1 Thessalonians 5.12, it says, Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you. Acknowledge them, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, and always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And do not quench the Holy Spirit. So do not quench the Spirit. Uh, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Test them all and hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. Every kind of evil reject it. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all God's people with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. That's great, isn't it? So here is the first Thessalonians guide to being rapture ready. What do we need to do? Well, number one, we need to avoid sexual immorality. We read this in 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 6. We need to control our own bodies, don't be lustful like the pagans, and don't take advantage of one another. Number two, love one another. We read this in 1 Thessalonians 4.9. Lead a quiet life. 
1 Thessalonians 4.11 Mind your own business, work with your hands, and don't be dependent on anybody. Number four, encourage one another about the rapture. We read this in 1 Thessalonians 4.18. Be sober and awake. 1 Thessalonians 5.16 Number six, put on the armor of God. We read this in 1 Thessalonians 5.8. Put on the breastplate of faith and love and the helmet of the hope of salvation. Number seven, acknowledge those who work hard among you. Those would be people who care for you and admonish you and hold them in a high regard and love. We read this in 1 Thessalonians 5.12. Live in peace. We read this in 1 Thessalonians 5.13. Number nine, warn those who are idle or disruptive. Number 10, encourage the disheartened. Number 11, help the weak. Number 12, be patient. We read all of these in 1 Thessalonians 5.14. Number 13, do not pay back evil for evil. Number 14, strive to do what is good. We read all of this in 1 Thessalonians 5.15. Number 15, rejoice always. 1 Thessalonians 5.16 Number 16, pray continually. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Number 17, give thanks in all circumstances. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Number 18, do not quench the Holy Spirit by treating prophecies with contempt, but we are to test all prophecies, hold on to what is good, and reject those that are evil. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 if you enjoyed this content, please be sure to check out more Bible studies in the Bible Studies playlist, and be sure to like and subscribe.